Hello there chaps. It's a busy day today, but uh, I just wanted to show you that the frog eye is very dirty. Uh, I haven't washed it since it's been painted really. And I need to wash it because I've got a, a cover for it to protect it. Because it's been in the workshop next to the bead blaster and the compressor. And I'm not very good at washing cars, but my friend Jamie is. Woohoo! Alright dude! Thanks for coming over man! It's alright, uh, the sprite needs a bit of a clean up. Is it looking dirty? Yeah! Should we get and have a look? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get set up and then uh, give it a bit of a clean I think. Wonderful. Yeah, get Thanks it looking nice and shiny. And also give our followers some tips man about how to clean their cars because you might have a few tips that you can share with them. I'm sure I will yeah and I brought a little uh, box of goodies for you as well so Thank I can you, show you dude. that in a bit. Thank you. Okay guys, I am now by myself. I say by myself, I've got my handy helper, my wife Stace. She's gonna be helping, holding the camera a little bit. And I'm hoping you can hear me because Emmanuel's camera, he's got a really nice little um, wind muff on the top. I don't have one. <laughs> so there might be some wind blast in, there might not, I don't know. But anyway, so my name is Jamie. I am from <sighs> Magic Valentin. Um, we're a mobile valeting company in Starbridge, which is where Classic Carbs and Rusty Love are based. Rusty Love. Um, and we also now sell a range of our own car cleaning products. Me and Emmanuel have been friends for about 10 years, we've known each other. Um, so we kind of thought we'd work together. I'm going to clean the frog eye sprite and I'm going to leave him this little box of goodies as well. I've dropped him off one of each of our current range of products and I'm going to use them now to clean as well. I've got my three car cleaning buckets, my wash, my rinse and my wheels. Um, and we're going to get looking good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some shampoo in a bucket, put some snow foam on the car, rinse it off, use the shampoo to clean the car. Oh, nice noisy van, pulled up right here. Uh, I've got tyre products, I've got my classic try and quick detailer, which is going to remove any uh, drying marks and it's going to just add a nice shine to the car. Window cleaner. It doesn't, I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this on the tyres actually. It's my rubber and vinyl product, but it's going to be a bit easier than using the foam pad on these because there's not much not much clearance here, do you see what I mean? But I can get my trigger in and spray it. And then once I've done that, I'm going to use the Gecko Skin, which is a hydrophobic sealant on the outside of the car. And that's going to protect the paintwork. It's going to make it shine even more, add gloss, um, and it'll like make the water bead off. Make it look even more like a supercar than it already does. But I'm going to... I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, basically. Am I going to walk you through each product as I'm using it? I'll give you a quick rundown and then just show the product that I'm using as I do it. So starting off, we've got our white out snow foam. This one's not a pH neutral one. So it's actually gonna break down any dirt and grime and things like that that's gonna be on the outside of the car. The point of this is that instead of getting your mitt straight on the car and potentially picking up little bits of stones that are on the paintwork, oh, that helps if I don't <laughs> drop it. Um, when you if, you, if you were to do that, if you were to go straight on with the meat, that you might drag across any stones, bits of dirt, and you might cause little scratches, little micro or things like that. So we're gonna apply that, leave it to dwell, and then we rinse it off, and then we can get going with the mitt. So I'm just gonna, you can measure it out, but I'm just gonna buy eye it, do it the Geordie way. Now it's gonna be a game of trying to get the snow foam on the car without getting it in the car. Alright, so I've managed to put a nice coating on it without getting too much inside. I'm just going to come around and clean any of these bits off now. It's only you know, water and snow foam, so it's no big deal. But you want to, when you put your new snow foam on, I see a lot of people put it on really, really thick and you have like a blanket on it. You don't want a blanket, you want to put it on thin enough that it drips. Because the point of it is, it's breaking it down, it's lifting it, all the contaminants, and it's, it's going to loosen it so that it can either flow off like this as you leave it because we're going to leave this now for like five or ten minutes to just do its work 
and as much of it that falls off as possible, fab. But the rest of it, we want it to jet off after. And if you've put this massive thick blanket on that doesn't even move, you're kind of defeating the point. Do you know what I mean? So this, to me, everyone's got their own way of doing it. Everyone's got their own opinions on snow foam. This, to me, is the perfect covering. This has already been on now for a few minutes. So it was a bit thicker to start with, but it starts breaking down as it's on there. And while I leave that now to dwell, I'm going to fill my buckets. So we've got 16 litre buckets. We've got grit guards in each one. One's for wheels. One is for putting your clean mitt in. And then you put your mitt to the paintwork. And then you put it in the other bucket, which is going to rinse off all the dirt and grit off your bucket, off your mitt, sorry. And then you go back in, you clean and do it again. And the point of the grit guards is that when you put your bit, mitt in there and you've got all the gritty bits off the mitt into the water, they sink to the bottom. They get stuck in the under the grit guard and then when you put your mitt back in you're not like ramming it into these bits of grit and then going straight back to your paintwork with it if you know what i mean this phone has been on now for like i don't know just over five minutes something like that got my buckets ready to do the actual washing with the mitts so I'm just going to jet this off now get all the snow foam off and see where we stand You can already see, to be honest, how much dirt has been lifted and cleaned just from the jet wash and obviously the snow foam. Like I say, the snow foam isn't pH neutral, so it's actually broken down some of the uh, dirt and grime. It's looking good. Now, I'm not going to dry this now because I'm going to straighten with my mitt. Um, and then we're going to, so we're going to mitt it, jet it, then I'm going to dry it. So, don't watch. Yeah, now this car, I don't tell you, Manuel, it wasn't all that dirty. I'm still going to charge it for the price, but uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep it between me, you and me. So when I'm doing this, I'm working in nice straight lines. You don't want to be getting your mitt on it and going in circles. If you do that, pretty much whatever way you do it, you've got the risk of making little scratches because you're going to pick up bits of grit, you're going to pick up maybe your mitt might have had a little bit of plastic in it from packaging. It could be anything that's going to make you make a scratch. But if you make a scratch and you swirl it round, when, this, when the light hits it, you're going to see it a lot more than if you'd made a, a straight scratch. That's basically the kind of thing we're going for. When it comes to cleaning your car, it's all about damage minimalization because you, it's paintwork. You're going to do little things eventually. You're going to take it somewhere where you drive around and you're going to get it covered in stones, uh, like little bits of dirt and stones that's going to make little scratches, little bits of damage, no matter how good you are at looking after your car it's going to pick up scratches but the straighter those scratches are the better pretty much and you can do this in any order you want but i like to kind of go around the whole car doing the top sections and then i'm going to come back to do the bottom bits because the bottom bits where you're going to hold the most uh like bits of again dirt grime traffic film uh tar even so i'll just do them last just in case i do pick up anything Clean. And now I've got a separate mitt, I like to use a five finger one for wheels. It's literally got five fingers. Because then you can use it if I need to get one finger in between a spoke. Then we can do that without having to get the whole mitt in. Like this. And you just get a good coverage on the whole wheel. And actually now I'm looking at it. I'm gonna need a brush to get in some of these all that. Come back. I've got a brush. This is one of our brushes. So with the brush I like to just get it in the water. I forgot to actually explain what the shampoo is for as well. The reason we put the shampoo in the buckets, and you know, people think that you can just use something like fairy liquid or anything that boils, you can't really. Because what you need is full lubrication. Obviously fairy liquid is one of the most lubricating things that you can have, as you will know if you've got it on anything before. But the things that are in fairy liquid make things shine. And that's not what you want because if it's going to make it shine, it's going to cover up any protection you've got. And if you've waxed it or put a sealant on top of your car before, 
when you wash it with fairy liquid, it doesn't take that off, which is what some people believe happens. What it actually does is it leaves a layer on top, which stops your water from beading off, stops the car from shining as well as it could if you've just got a nice proper uh, carnauba uh, wax on top or a, a, a nice synthetic sealant, which is what we're going to use today. So get yourself a nice dedicated car shampoo, which is going to lubricate your mitt against the paintwork. Again, it's your stopping swells, your stopping scratches. So when you run your mitt over it, you're going to lift up all the bits of dirt and you're going to pull them off in a kind of uh, elevated away from the paintwork. It's going to be lost in the bubbles instead of going down the side. Okay guys, now I'm just gonna quickly show you. This is called water behavior. And this is how, quite literally, the water behaves when it's on the paintwork. You can see it sort of like puddling up. And it's running off a lot, well, that's because it's on the slope, but if you see these bubbles, yeah, they're not like round, they're not smooth, they're not symmetrical, but it's just, the car looks wet. Um, and that's because the car doesn't have any protection on it at the minute, doesn't have a wax, doesn't have a sealant. Um, and what that's gonna mean is that when Things like dirt and oh, you're gonna get sick of me saying dirt and contaminants, but that's, <laughs> that's all I know and all I'm about. But when that lands on it, it's gonna sit directly on the paintwork. And if you get something like bird poo on your car, uh, they're full of things. They have something called bird lime, which is um, acidic. It might be alkaline. I can't remember. It, either way, it can eventually burn through the clear coat on your paintwork, which has happened to a lot of my customers. It happened to my brother's car actually. He had to send it back because he had it on lease. Got me to clean it, and he let bird poo sit on it for like six months, and it burns wind's picking up it burns straight through the clear coat and uh yeah it was just covered in damage then and you get the other side of mine so what i'm gonna do is in a bit i'm gonna put my protective coating on it and you'll see the difference between a protected bit of paintwork and an unprotected bit of paintwork and if you like the look of that actually you can follow my tiktok because i'm forever posting videos of my customers cars before and afters of uh, me applying the sealant that's not the only time that it's going to be though to be fair like if you've had it machine polished um, the surface is so incredibly smooth, the water is going to bead up then because the beads are happening. And now, let me try and describe this. I'm not actually a scientist, if you couldn't tell, but I'm going to try. There's the beads happen because surface tension on the water. I didn't even Google it, I just remembered it. I'm sure it's, it's something to do with water with surface water tension. So when the, when the surface is smooth, the water can't like cling to the surface. So the only thing it can cling to is itself. So it's creating these perfect little bubbles. And at the minute, it's sort of clinging to the paintwork. Again, I'm no scientist. This is how I understand it. And uh, if, uh, if you know any different, feel free to tell me. But this is how I'm understanding it. Yeah, so then it sticks, it, it can only cling to itself. And as you're driving down the roads, as you come to clean it with a jet wash, if it's protected, you rinse it off. It's not sticking to the paintwork. It's going to just come off. Um, so that's why you should like protect your paintwork. Not only does it put a layer in between the paint and any dirt, poo, things like that, it also makes cleaning a hell of a lot easier. Clean the windows guys, get your bath cleaner. Two cloths, nice waffle weave one and a nice fluffy one. You're gonna buff it in with the waffle weave and then you're gonna buff it off with the fluffy cloth. Now I'm gonna use the rubber and vinyl milk to do the tires, just all the way around and we're done. Next step, I'm gonna do some quick detailer. If you're not putting a protection on last, if you're just doing like a maintenance wash, this could be your last step now, you just clean the paintwork with it. It's gonna get rid of any like dry marks or streaks that you've got left on the paintwork. And also, when we were at a Stonely Kit Car Show last weekend, which I was gonna actually put some clips in here. If I send them over to Manny, I'll get him to put them in. A lot of people are buying it because they get into the kit car show, they've got dust all over the car from the drive and they can use it to clean the car down because it lubricates. So instead of, again, dragging all the dust down your car, you're just gonna elevate it and wipe it off. So 
this last step I'm going to do now. I'm going to put the gecko skin hydrophobic sealant on. I'm going to spray it under my rag, apply it to the car, and then buff it off with a nice fluffy cloth. And this is going to, like we were talking about earlier, it's going to make the water bead, it's going to repel dirt and rock, it's going to make cleaning easier and make the car shinier. I'll show you the difference that we were talking about earlier with the water behaviour. I've coated the side on the right, I haven't coated the left. So let's have a look. See the difference? We've got all these nice little beads here. And on this side, we've got just chunks of water that aren't running off. That side's just running off. Okay, guys, we got nice shiny protected cleaned car it's looking good and it's just in time by the looks of the weather for it does not rain so we're going to get back inside and maybe we can have a proper look around it with mano in the dry i'm going to go get him in a sec actually i'm going to make him all embarrassed i'm going to get in a, 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 a reaction clip of him on the camera Where is he? do you want to come and see your shiny car Oh, oh these! Oh, yeah. That looks awesome. It's quite good, isn't it? Wow! I just got some clips and I showed these guys how uh, now it's protected, how the water behaves on the paintwork. And I got lots of clips. I'm going to edit them down, I think, because um, you're going to be a bit bored if you listen to everything that I've been Mate, going on about. Beautiful. It's nice and shiny, isn't it? <laughs> that looks beautiful. Thank you, not Too bad. Oh, that is like <laughs> I know, yeah. Is it just going to sit inside now until there's a nice sunny day to take it out for a drive? Gorgeous. Thing is, it helps that the paintwork's pretty much immaculate because <laughs> it's so good and new. But at least now you haven't got to worry about it getting any uh, damage because of all the dust and everything building up on it. Jamie, thanks a lot, man. That looks beautiful. No, dude. thank you for having me, Matt. I'm glad we could uh, get it looking good. That looks very sexy, I think. <laughs> Well, I was saying while I was cleaning it that it was a seemed like a very sexual act because I think it's because it's such a curvy car. I don't know, like you're kind of polishing it and things, and it's yeah. looks looking shiny. good. I'm really impressed, mate. I'm really impressed. That works just absolutely lovely on it. It's, it smells gorgeous as well. Yeah, well, you can still smell the banana from from when I've done the tyres. That's what it is, yeah. It's like fast like, like yeah. <laughs> banana tyres, what's on the inside? <laughs> That's, yeah. Nothing. Nothing yet. Yeah. I thought that, I'll leave it to you guys, but you haven't got carpets in there, so it's... True. You need to chuck some carpet down so that we can uh, give it a soak, yeah. Uh... It'll be faster now, it weighs less, it's got less dirt on it. All the uh, dirt spots earlier, isn't it? It's looking good. So this can go on now, man. Oh yeah. Should we put this on? Yeah, you can. I mean, if, oh, if you. The thing is, I've had. Yeah. One, I had a customer who yeah. had one of those, and they put it on, and it created loads of little scratches on the car because when they put it on, I don't know the ins and outs of why. Well, if it's, in the, if it's in the wind, maybe if the wind ricochets. Exactly. It. Yeah. If like, it's clean. So when you put it on, it, there shouldn't be anything underneath. But obviously, if the inside of the um, cover has got anything on like so some of them do it depends what they're made of i'm not exactly an expert on these covers but i know that some covers can cause little scratches and things so if it doesn't need the cover then put it on depends if you're going to clean it again what about the dust that's going to settle on it i want it clean for when i use it next. yeah well it's protected now so when it comes to next clean next using it maybe just give it a jet off or a hose even it won't even need the jet if anyone wants a similar experience well you're gonna to have to get in touch with this gentleman I'm gonna put a link to his site and for the kit that he used today on this car yeah we've also got stuff that include the interiors which we didn't do on this one that's right yeah um, mate honestly thank you very much no problem sorry about the dirty hands <laughs> it's all right I can go and those <laughs> off now as well yeah I forgot to actually like include any links or anything so you can get all the social media down below yeah if you follow us on TikTok you can watch the videos we do but then we've got Facebook and Instagram as well where we share it all 
Um, yeah, there'll be a link to the shop where you can buy everything that you saw in the video, and also everyone who follows Rusty Love, Rusty Love, yeah, <laughs> can get uh, a discount, fifteen percent, by using code Rusty Love. I'll put that down below as well. That is awesome, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we we will be uh, on the road with this little frog guy as soon as we find out some uh, misfire, and I'm sure it's going to wow the crowds the way it looks now. So thanks for watching once again, and uh, goodbye from Jamie from Magic. Valeting and goodbye from me, Emmanuel from Rusty Lee. See you later, guys. See you later. Bye.